Okay, here's example 10 in a proof topic. We've been looking at proof by contradiction, and we're going to have a look at proving that root 2 is an irrational number. There's a, a little bit of uh, mathematical history involved uh, with this one. Uh, there was um, a, a Greek mathematician and philosopher called uh, Hippasus. Um, he was a Pythagorean uh, follower, I think it was maybe about a hundred years or so after Pythagoras, so he wasn't a contemporary, but certainly from the school of Pythagoras, um, so deeply in, immersed in mathematics, but also some of their slightly uh, weird and passionate uh, kind of lifestyle uh, ideas as well. And he was credited in some stories with discovering the idea that an irrational number existed which kind of rocked the world of the Pythagoreans and legend has it there's not much proof uh, that either uh, some of the other Pythagoreans drowned him uh, because he was basically viewed as a heretic or that he was drowned at sea uh, by the gods for daring to suggest that numbers could be irrational because the Pythagoreans believed numbers to be perfect uh, quantities rather than this imperfection that irrational numbers bring us. Anyway, that's the, the story behind it. So prove that root 2 is irrational, that the definition of this is really important. So first of all, uh, it, there's not an if then, it just says prove that root 2 is irrational. So what's the negation uh, of that? The negation uh, statement of root 2 is irrational. It's simply root 2 is rational again. It's a binary uh, choice you've got here. Numbers are either rational or irrational. So we're going to say that root 2 is actually a rational number. So the definition uh, of a rational number is, is important in this uh, process. So what we're going to define is that if root 2 is rational, then it can be expressed as the fraction p over q where p and q are integers, and in this case, positive integers. And the, the second kind of crucial fact is that they've got no common factors in that it is a fully simplified fraction. So two parts to it, p and q are integer, positive integers with no common factors. That's our uh, definition, precise definition of a rational number. Okay, so if that's the case then, if root 2 is equal to p over q, uh, then we could say that uh, let's square both sides. Okay. Square both sides, get rid of the, uh, the third. We could say that 2 is therefore p squared over q squared. And if we multiply through by q squared, we get 2 q squared equals p squared. Okay, now if that's the case, if 2q squared equals p squared, uh, because p is 2 times the value, p squared is 2 times the value of q squared, it implies that p squared is even, because it's double whatever q squared is. And if p squared is even, then it's also a mathematical fact that p is even, okay? We can prove that elsewhere, but if p squared is even, then p is even, i.e. we can say that p can be represented by our typical kind of um, uh, value 2k, p equals 2k, uh, what would k be? In this case, it's a positive integer, so we'll just say that it's a, well, we'll say a positive integer, okay? So we've got, we're now saying that p can be uh, represented by 2k, so let's put this back in. So 2q squared is equal to, no, not p squared this time, but 2k squared, which becomes 4k squared. And if we divide through by 2, we get q squared is equal to 2k squared. Now, for any value k squared, if we double that to get q squared, we must have an even number. So in other words, what we're saying here is that because there's a common factor of 2 uh, on the right-hand side, that q squared must be even. 
which implies, therefore, as we said before, that Q is also an even number, which means that Q has to be able to be represented by some other uh, term 2, in this case I'll say 2J, you can use any letter you like, where J is a positive integer. So we've now discovered in our exploration of this relationship that P is defined by some even number 2K, Q is an even number 2J. So going back to the original statement, we're saying that root 2 is P over Q, so root 2 is equal to 2k over 2j. Now, the only problem is that this is a contradiction. Because what we're saying is here is that there's a common factor. So if root 2 is rational, then it's going to generate a fraction with a common factor. This is a contradiction. This is a contradiction, and that's why it's really the definition super important. This is a con. Oops, I've misspelled that. Con contradiction as p over q was assumed or defined. I was going to put as in was assumed to have no common factors. It seems like a small thing um, for us because we're so used to simplifying fractions and thinking that's okay, they're equivalent, but in this case it is a, it's because we've defined it as having no common factors, this is a contradiction. The negation is false, therefore the original conjecture is true. You can use this structure um, to prove any, uh, the, the square root of any uh, third. So it's an interesting proof um, that relies on a very precise definition that is so precise that we wouldn't normally regard it to be mathematically uh, important, but in this case it is. So this root 2 is indeed an irrational number. Uh, if you want to practice it with root 3 or root 5, you can use exactly the same uh, kind of structure to it. Okay? Enjoy!